Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today, we are seeking balance. As recently on the Grand Line Review, we explored the top 10 highest known bounties in the series. It involved a lot of difficult to say numbers, as well as very well known individuals throughout the world. However, today we need to acknowledge the other side of that coin, of which the denizens of YouTube almost never grant any attention to, which are the lowest known bounties in the series. And to be perfectly honest with you, I find this to be a much more exciting list, because you can more or less predict, if not flat out know who the highest bounty holders are, but asking for the lowest? Well, apart from one or two that you would know off the top of your head, it may be a tricky exercise and that is the thrill of it. Before we examine our lowest earners though, this list has to have a couple of extra criteria applied to it. Firstly, is that joke bounties are inadmissible. And what I mean by that is something like Mikio Ito, who is a quote unquote character in the series slash real life figure, who is worth a mighty 1 million yen. Stuff like that we're going to ignore. But in addition to that, all bounty holders on this list must be canon because there is a dark, dark sea full of Philip bounty holders, all of whom are most certainly disappointments to their parents due to their staggeringly low numbers. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 10 lowest known bounties in One Piece. Number 10, Hachan and Higuma the Bear. We are going to be beginning our exploration today with a double bill of former villains, the latter of whom was actually the very first antagonist within the entire series. Now, as they set the bar for this entire list, I'd just like those of you who don't immediately know the answer to have a bit of a guess of what these two are worth. What do you reckon? 15 million berries, 12 million, 10 million perhaps? Well, certainly not. All of those figures are far, far too rich for their blood, as Hachan and Higuma clock in at a tepid 8 million berries apiece. Now on paper, this is pretty insane because they both have some fine achievements, in theory. I mean, Hachan was a member of the Sun Pirates, which remains one of the more infamous pirate crews to have existed to this day. And Higuma and his bandits came into direct conflict with the Red Hair Pirates, prior to Shanks becoming an emperor, that is, and they got all of their asses handed to them, and Higuma ended up being nommed by the Lord of the Coast. But if we discount those last three things I said, then he sounds pretty impressive. And you know what, to be fair, 8 million berries is still quite a decent chunk of change, and I can guarantee you that there are at least 9 other people in this world who were deemed as even less of a threat to the world government than Hachan or Higuma. Number 9. Curly Dadan. Moving right along, we have another bandit, and not only that, but another bandit hailing from Dawn Island, no less. However, Dadan, whilst reasonably powerful in her own right, would not come to be known as the most prominent bandit of the island, as she was branded with a bounty of 7,800,000 berries, a mere 200,000 behind key rival Higuma. Although he's dead now, so I suppose Dadan got the last laugh there. Dadan is a bit tricky though, because she isn't known in the series for any of the exploits that would have earned that number, but rather for being a parental figure to the three amigos that are Luffy, Ace, and Sabo. However, a certain Monkey D. Garp did once claim that Dadan and her bandit gang had committed more crimes than there are stars in the sky. So despite her heart of gold, we are talking about a pretty serious criminal organization here. What we definitely can say for Dadan is that she is a rather fierce woman, choosing to wield an ax in combat, and after joining forces with a chibi ace, she was able to overcome an incredibly notorious pirate by East Blue standards, being Captain Blue Jam, who himself had a bounty of 14,300,000 berries. Not that bounties denote power levels, they absolutely do not, and this is the last time that that will ever be brought up in this discussion. But Blue Jam was a tough customer regardless. Not tough or widespread enough to promote Dadan's own number any further, but you know what? 700,800,000 berries is just fine. Number eight, Mikita. Probably better known to most people as Miss Valentine, Mikita first appeared as an agent of the then mysterious Baroque Works, with a devil fruit ability that could kill through the mere act of being sat on. And the world government clearly took notice of this, issuing her a mild-mannered bounty of 7,500,000 berries. And you know, I'd say that this is fairly accurate. For the potential her devil fruit has, Mikita only really ever used it to perform one action, which was the equivalent of a Super Smash Brothers player maining Kirby and only using down B to attack, which you know is effective to an extent, and Mikita certainly saw enough success with it to never bother to branch out elsewhere, but I'm afraid it's exactly that sort of thinking that is going to get you placed on a list like this. Rather notably, her partner Jem, aka Mr. Five, was actually far too valuable to be with us here today, as his bounty is around 10 million berries, which sits in the seven figure range, something that absolutely none of our contenders here can boast at all. And speaking of, let's go on to meet a few of our other underachievers in this world. Number seven. The Meow Band Brothers. Individually known as Sham and Butchie, these two near furries command a nice and subtle 7 million berry bounty between them. Now remember, shared bounties aren't that uncommon a concept within the One Piece world, and the most prominent example of that would be Dory and Broggy, except that their shared bounty is 200 million berries. Now that 
That's a fine number. As for the Meowban brothers, well, they leave a tiny bit to be desired in comparison. What it does bring to light though, is the fact that individually, neither Sham nor Butchie would have likely attained a number as large as 7 million. And you know what? They may have even been heavy contenders to top this race to the bottom, because I mean, if you divide their worth perfectly, 3.5 million each is a deliciously low number, but it doesn't stop there. Because you know, what if Sham was worth 5 million berries and Butchie was only worth 2 million berries? Even better. Or perhaps Sham is worth a measly one berry whilst Butchie makes up the rest. Either way, this is an example of teamwork going absolutely awry. Separately, these two could have been true contenders for the lowest bounty in the series. However, together, I'm afraid the best I can do for them is seventh place. Number six, Chu. All right, here we have yet another fishman gracing this list. And just like his compatriot Hachan, Chu was a former member of the Sun Pirates. Pretty good CV. However, it hasn't quite gotten him the job as he was assigned a poverty level bounty of 5,500,000 berries. Quite a leap downwards from our previous contenders who I will remind you were the Meow Band brothers. So Chu, you have a bit of explaining to do, buddy. Now, a lot of this may have to do with the fact that Chu isn't the smartest of individuals. In fact, he has the distinct dishonor of being the only character to lose to Usopp in one-on-one -on -one combat in the entire East Blue Saga, as well as most of the Alabasta Saga, the Skypiea Saga, the Water 7 Saga. Actually, pretty crazily enough, Usopp would not beat another major opponent one-on-one -on -one until Perona in the Thriller Bark Saga. And this is despite the fact that Chu has dem lips, making him very proficient at sucking. And rather notably, Chu does not swallow. He exclusively spits, which is his primary method of attack, firing bullet-esque projectiles from that their mouth. And sadly, this isn't quite versatile enough to do much for him, and hence why he was given a token bounty, which is more than likely due to his association with the Sun Pirates as well as Arlong. So we're not really in a good place here, but I'm afraid that our standards are only going to slip further on this list. Number five. Alvida. Here we have the self-proclaimed most beautiful lady on all of the seas, and that was the thought that became echoed back at her after the fateful consumption of the Sube Sube no Mi. But I'm afraid that even with that, Alvida doesn't quite carry the infamy of a Boa Hancock or the acclaim of a Princess Shirohoshi. And in fact, the world really only has taken notice of Alvida to the tune of 5 million berries. And I suppose that amount is fair enough. I mean, she was a relatively dangerous pirate in the days of East Blue, dangerous enough to be swiftly dealt with by a singular rubber boy anyway. In her defense though, Alvida has some guns because she wields that mighty, mighty club. So there is some damage to be done to the civilians of the world. And hey, after becoming associated with a certain buggy D clown, there's every chance that Alvida's name will incidentally spread throughout the world. Although I'm not so sure that being connected to buggy is going to help her in the numbers game. Number four, or Chemi. So if you don't remember Port Chemi, I don't necessarily blame you, but he appeared in Luffy's second flashback as a member of the Blue Jam Pirates and is no longer with us in this world actually. But while he was, he commanded an incredible bounty of 3,400,000 berries. Eight, that's a low number. It's actually almost embarrassing for a fully grown adult to be considered such a featherweight to the world. But when we take a close look at Port Chemi's CV, it's pretty easy to see why, because he only seems to be dangerous to one sliver of the population, which is defense children. And so Pochemi's claim to fame was capturing and torturing a very young Monkey D. Luffy, but failing to get any information out of him and then proceeding to get beaten up by two other children as a result. Even his Captain Blue Jam was so sufficiently ashamed of this human being that he promptly disposed of him after learning of the latest in what could only have been a long streak of failure. Number three, Babe. Better known to most of you as Mr. Four, Babe is actually quite a surprise appearance to me because he was very high up in the Baroque Works rankings and his bounty of 3,200,000 berries doesn't necessarily initially reflect that. I mean, his partner, Miss Merry Christmas, had a bounty of 14 million berries, which is far too excessive for this list. And as stated before, even his immediate underclassman, Mr. Five, was worth 10 million. So what did Babe do wrong? Well, it may have something to do with the fact that he is more or less completely useless on his own. I mean, he has one hell of a mean swing, which is reflected in his name, which is taken from Babe Ruth. But without a dog cannon and a pushy mole woman, I'm not entirely sure what Babe would be able to accomplish. He's quite possibly the least intelligent character within the entire series. And in fact, he actually seems genuinely incapable of thinking for himself. So in terms of being a threat to the world government, I actually think that Babe would probably join the Marines if someone asked him to and led him into it, or the Revolutionary Army, or any faction. It just so happened that on this occasion, he ended up being a pirate with some fine bat skills and a lifelong dream of becoming a pizza boy. And yes, I'm serious about that last part. That is 100% canon. And you know what? He would probably make much more from that minimum wage job than his bounty is worth. Number two. 
Beppo. All right, so I am always thrilled to see Beppo, even on a list like this, which certainly does not do him justice whatsoever. With his bounty being a measly yet ever so adorable, 500 berries. However, this understated amount does match Beppo's understated personality quite well, as he is a quiet yet curious polar bear mink. Despite this, Beppo does have at least one highly valued skill, as he is actually the navigator of the Heart Pirates, which is very interesting given that he came to join them once he was swept away to sea after descending one of the legs of Zunisha and later boarded a ship, randomly ending up in North Blue and meeting a young Trafalgar Law. However, of course, deep down, we do all know the reason why Beppo was branded numerically in this manner, and it's because the world government has a horrible habit of mistaking certain pirate crew members for pets. And so Beppo, as the now mascot of the Heart Pirates, will probably never receive his due attention. However, it must be said that he is in pretty good company considering number one, Tony, Tony Chopper. All right, so I don't think there was a single person not expecting our wonderful reindeer friend to top this list here today. As his bounty of 100, I repeat 100 berries, is quite widespread knowledge due to him being a member of the Straw Hats. And of course, it's for the exact same reason as Beppo, which is that Chopper has always been seen as an adorable pet of the Straw Hat Pirates. So much so that when the fake Straw Hats made their way into the world, they came equipped with their own Chopper pet impersonator just for that extra solid piece of authenticity. I mean, come on, can you even tell which one is the real Chopper in this picture? I certainly can't. Now it does also need to be said that while Chopper is the resounding victor of today's list, he could have won an even greater victory if his bounty had not been increased to 100 berries from his initial number of 50 berries. So really, nobody else ever had a chance. However, due to the fact that Chopper is a primary protagonist, it is entirely possible that a day may come where he becomes so infamous that the world government has no choice but to recognize him for the threat that he really is. However, as things stand currently, Sir Chopper, I have no choice but to crown you as the lowest known bounty in One Piece. But that pretty much does it for the top 10 lowest known bounties in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on these abysmal numbers. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.